professor at Faculty of Science, University of Novi Sad. I teach uh, freshwater ecology, ecology, uh, numerical ecology, and a lot of other ecologies. And today, uh, I will discuss with you about environmental challenges, regional, local, and global. Um, also, I would like to uh, say what are the topics of today's uh, webinar, but also to stress um, and to ask you to pay attention on uh, terms, different environmental and ecological terms that we are going to describe and discuss today, because uh, I noticed uh, that there is a, a lot of uh, wrong use of different common terms, such as ecology, environmental science, and uh, using these terms properly, are, it's very important for good ecological and environmental communication. So uh, today's topics are uh, global and regional environmental trends and driving forces, land use management, extraction of mineral and non-mineral resources in the region and globally, degradation, fragmentation, and loss of natural habitats and artificial habitats as alternative biodiversity hotspots in the region, also regional invasive species corridors and introduction pathways, soil, air, and water pollution, and waste management. So basic uh, terms uh, and facts regarding these topics. And of course, uh, environmental legislation and policy in the region and uh, European Union. <clears throat> so first, let's see what is environmental science and how to use this term properly. Well, this is interdisciplinary academic field that draws on ecology, geology, meteorology, biology, chemistry, engineering, and physics to study environmental problems and human impacts on environments. So we have to consider, as you can see here, um, these interdependencies between a society, economy, and ecology in order to explore our environment um, properly. So it's a way that anthropogenic or natural influences affect the quality of inorganic and biotic components of biosphere. And also, uh, this is the way uh, how our population, human population, affect environment. And so that's the reason why we have to consider all these different fields, such, such as sociology, ecology, forestry, geology, engineering, chemistry, in order to um, uh, uh, do environmental science. So why, why we have to do that and why this is happening, why environmental science is important? Well, because we are living in exponential age, uh, age of exponential growth of human population, which was triggered by industrial revolution. So our we as a species started to produce a huge impact on our environment uh, after industrial revolution has started. So. Once again, one, environmental science is a science of how human population affect environment. And what is ecology? So this is the problem because in our region, in the Western Balkan regions and your countries, our countries, this term, it's not used properly. So let's see first what is an ecology. So this is a science uh, so the science of ecology studies interactions between individual organisms and their environment. So uh, 
we can mathematically express this relationship between environment and organisms. And of course, we can describe main, uh, major principles and interaction between different species. So uh, let's see here. If I want to calculate how the number of these predators will affect the number of deers, this prey population in this habitat, then I'm doing ecology. I'm not doing environmental science. So if I want to see uh, how this drought, so the lack of the water in habitat, will affect offspring, number of offspring of this there, I'm actually uh, talking about some ecological processes in the ecosystem. So uh, usually uh, ecology looks like this. So this is an example of artificial intelligence model applied on the Danube River. So we try to predict uh, the water quality of the Danube uh, according to aquatic plants. So remember uh, this image when you want to use the term ecology. Okay, uh, another term which uh, is going to be very frequently used <clears throat> in preparation of uh, your articles or campaigns. It's a natural protection, actually a term which evolved into nature conservation. Because uh, if we are protecting nature in a sustainable way, then it's a nature conservation. So this is a contemporary term. So conservation is the act of protecting Earth's natural resources for current and future generations. You probably uh, heard a lot about biodiversity last week, but let's repeat that there are two approaches of uh, nature conservation. It's a species approach, <clears throat> sorry, it's a species approach and ecosystem approach. So uh, the species approach is an older one uh, where, where a single species is a target of protection, legal protection. And um, more, I mean, the modern approach one is an ecosystem one, uh, which said that we should protect whole habitats and whole uh, biological communities, and then we will protect these rare and dangerous or threatened species as well. So I mentioned sustainability. So this term should be clear as well because uh, it's frequently used and it should be used properly. So sustainability is the ability of Earth, various systems to survive and adapt to environmental conditions indefinitely. So what are the steps to reach a sustainable society? So we are going to talk next one hour. But first, let's see what are environmental problems, causes and connections. Uh, so the major causes of environmental problems are population growth, wasteful resources use, poverty, poor environmental accounting and ecological ignorance. So uh, there is a fact that uh, before uh, COVID-19 um, outbreak, uh, the humanity at a global level coped with the poverty uh, at satisfied level. I mean, uh, poverty was um, almost uh, just a local problem in, in, on some sites uh, in the world. But after COVID-19 outbreak, um, poverty starts to be a global problem uh, again. So uh, this is very important to, to add to this. So we are going to discuss these topics uh, more than once, and we're going to give different examples 
um, regional and, of course, global. So, as I said, uh, poor environmental accounting. So, uh, if we want to communicate environmental issues in our environment, we have to give them some quantity. We have to value them because decision makers will understand numbers. So uh, we have to give a value to natural resources. So this approach is called ecosystem services. So those are benefits to humans provided by natural environment and they can be divided into provisioning ecosystem services such as food, fresh water, fuel, and they are easy to co communicate their value, and I mean to quantify them and to express their value. <coughs> Sorry, they are regulating, such as climate regulation, flood regulation, um, disease regulation, water purification. Uh, cultural, uh, which are aesthetic, spiritual, educational, and of course, supporting um, ecosystem services, which include nutrition cycling, um, soil formation, primary production. And whenever I see this nutrition cycling, I remember of first experiment uh, called Biosphere, uh, where we, I mean, scientists try to make a completely closed system, uh, ecosystem, and to put uh, some uh, animals, plants, and uh, soil and other resources to imitate Earth. And this experiment uh, failed. Just, uh, and the reason of, uh, for this was a nutrition cycling. So nutrition cycling failed. So this is very important. So this is very important ecosystem service. So because we couldn't Im imitate Earth. <clears throat> so what are uh, benefits that we get? So as you can see, it's personal safety, it's adequate livelihood, it's access to goods, feeling well, and etc. So as you can see, there are some. Um, examples of this provisioning, regulating, cultural, and supporting ecosystem services. So once again, it's very important to give a quantity to and to give a value and to say what is the price of some natural resource. Okay, so let's talk about resources uh, on a human time scale. They can be a perpetual. What does it mean? It's on human time scale. They are continuous. So we can grab a, a huge amount of it as we need. Or they can be renewable. On a human time scale can be rep uh, replenished rapidly. And non-renewable, those are very uh, important. Because they are on human time scale, there is a fixed supply. So, since the population reached uh, this level, there, the number of non-renewable resources starts to rise. So, because they exist as a fixed quantity. So, as you know, uh, in, at a regional level, lithium uh, has a... a fixed quantity globally and regionally and uh, causing a huge uh, environmental problems and discussions as well. It's a burning environmental issue. So uh, recycling and reusing ex may extend this supply. So recycling process waste material into new material while reuse is using a resource over again in the same form. So why it's important to know that uh, resources are not perpetual at all uh, for humans, but for all organisms. 
on our planet. Well, let's see here. Uh, this is a population size uh, which rise over this time scale. And if we look here, you will see exponential growth of this population. But when it reached some limit, it starts to oscillate around this uh, limit. So this is a carrying capacity. So each population on its habitat has its carrying capacity. So what is uh, carrying capacity? So, so when we start to be aware of carrying capacity? Well, let's see this example of reindeers, which were introduced. So what is introduction? Introduction uh, is bringing a new species to some habitat. It's a species that didn't previously exist there, okay? So this is the introduction. So reindeers um, didn't exist on some island before. And after their introduction, um, almost in the next 30 years, their number rise from just 40 individuals to 2,000 and suddenly drop. They completely disappear from the Iceland. So what happened? Because there, this species exceeded carrying capacity. So if we go back to previous slide, we will see that this normal population will oscillate around this carrying capacity. So what happened with reindeers? They exceeded, exceeded this carrying capacity. So their maximum number of individuals uh, which environment can sustainably carry. So what does it mean? One, uh, number of individuals is less than carrying capacity. All the resources can be restored on time. So the future generations will have enough resources. So this means that this population is sustaining. So, uh, the same thing happened with human population on Eastern Iceland, which lives there um, from the 13th to the 16th century. And they were completely dependent on forest vegetation. Uh, after they uh, destroyed and performed deforestation, because they needed these resources, the whole ecosystem collapsed and they couldn't uh, survive and completely disappeared from this Iceland. So uh, th there is interesting uh, scientific article that I recommend you to read and also uh, you can use it uh, in some examples uh, during your environmental uh, com communication or preparing some articles. Okay, um, there are two strategies of species, uh, how they growth oscillate around this carrying capacity, around uh, these limits. So, and you will see that human population uh, sometimes can belong to one group and sometimes to another, depending if we are talking about developing countries or developed countries. So living standards will create an um, environment for our selected species behavior of human population or case-selected. So what are our selected species? Those species have many offspring, uh, but little or no parental care, because their strategy is to produce as much as they can offspring. Uh, and this offspring should uh, reach uh, reproductive age as soon as possible. And 
of course, the, I mean, those are small adults, but this can't be applied on the human population. But they easily adapt to unstable climate and environmental conditions because there is a lot of individuals, there is a huge number of offspring, and they are generalists, opportunists. Um, and unfortunately, they have a low ability to compete. So they are not strong comp competitors. So uh, if we compare this with the human population, we can conclude that this is a typical for countries with low living standards compared to, for example, to EU countries or West uh, world countries with a high standard living standards <clears throat> where a uh, number of offspring is fewer. Okay, so, and there is a high parental care and protection of offspring, a very late reproductive age. So it's, we are reaching this uh, strategy, population strategy in our countries, for, I mean, in our region. Um, so, but these individuals are usually, uh, the species, sorry, are specialists and they have a high ability to compete. And <clears throat> let's see about ecological footprints of humanity and different countries. So how much of the world human caring capacity will go to particular countries? So as we can see, the most of it goes to United States, European Union, China, and Eastern, uh, East world countries uh, are not spending uh, such a, a huge amount of resources. So uh, when we exceeded carrying capacity, we exceeded it in 1992. And if we present, um, if we take into account uh, uh, in one year, uh, all resources which are pr uh, produced on the planet Earth, and if we look each country separately, when these resources are used, so we will see, for example, that the, mo the best uh, conditions are in Vietnam, Jamaica, for example, for example, or Egypt, while West world countries will spend their resources for example, in April, and the rest of the year, they will use the resources that will never be restored okay? because we exceeded our carrying capacity. So there are different projections and predictions. What is going to happen? And currently there are a lot of attempts to slow down this process and go back to the stable condition where we are using as much as it can be restored during one year. So that's a pro that was a problem of a huge number of people on the planet. So uh, what about pol pollutants? So what are pollutants? Uh, those substances are found at a high enough levels in environment to cause harm to organisms. They can be point sources and non-point sources. So these point sources are easily to co communicate, to be recognized in nature, because those are, for example, these pipes um, or uh, some factories. But if we want to consider um, this agricultural land, then we are talking about non-point source. And this is actually the huge regional problem. So pollutants can have three types of unwanted effects. They can uh, disrupt, degrade life support system, damage health and uh, property. So this is very important because uh, this is something that we recognize easily because we, when we have concrete damage, we, which can be expressed in some amount of money, then it's easily to communicate and create 
nuisance such as noise and unpleasant smells and taste and etc. So uh, other problem, regional but a global as well, is deforestation. So uh, as you can see on the example of Eastern Iceland, uh, deforestation can reach us to the point uh, of complete uh, disappearance of human, human population on the earth very easily. So human activities have reduced, have reduced the earth's forest cover by much as half. And this uh, decrease of fertility, there is a lot of runoff of eroded soil and soil is natural resources, remember this, that can't be produced in a factory. So we are still not able to synthesize soil because a lot of natural uh, processes have to happen um, in the same time and the same place to generate um, soil, to generate formation of soil. So I usually say to my students, uh, try to imagine that I'll give you all components of the soil, but you still can't produce the soil. So this is very important, why we have to think about erosion. Um, deforestation creates premature extinction of species, loss of habitats for native species and migratory species. There is also a regional climate change, release of CO2 into atmosphere and acceleration of flooding. So um, due to ban of uh, tree cutting, uh, forest cutting in European Union, uh, there is uh, now there is a huge impact on forest in our region because suddenly deforestation accelerated uh, its rate and because uh, many companies and individuals as well, uh, <clears throat> find this uh, as a way to, to get a lot of money, you know, to sell to European Union trees. So uh, my students ask me, what do you think, teacher, about building some uh, road, uh, road over the uh, Frushka Gora mountain, uh, which is a uh, perfected area? Uh, near Novi Sad. Uh, so what do you think? Should we make a tunnel or road uh, which will fragment this protected area? So I'm always, uh, and I always think that we should avoid roads. And let's see here why. And what does habitat fragmentation mean? Because if you bring the road, highway here, uh, inevitably we will bring the people and people will continue to deforestate this area okay so they, they will continue to fragment this for example protected area so this is important to realize it's always better to have a tunnel instead of some highway and those are examples of harvesting trees. So trees can be harvested individually from diverse forests, so such as a selective cutting uh, or entire for forest. It's a clear cutting, which is ecological disaster, environmental disaster, and portions of the forest is harvested, such as this example. And this one is also can trigger some erosion, as you can hear, as you can see there. So uh, what are solutions for sustainable forestry? So we should identify and protect forest areas with high biodiversity, grow more timber on long rotations, rely more on selective cutting, stop clear cutting. So, I mean, we should be aware of this fact. 
Um, so we should prohibit fragmentation of remaining large blocks of forest, sharply reduce um, building into uncut forest areas. And there are some other examples, but from my point of view, one of the most important uh, shift government subsidies from harvesting trees to planting trees. So uh, government can do a lot. So this is very important information uh, to communicate and to be aware of. Other, um, also burning an environmental issue in the region, it's uh, exploitation of and excavation of mineral resources. Uh, because as you can see, uh, from surface mining to production and discarding of product, product, there is a lot of steps and all of them make a huge impact on environment. So as we can see, mining, uh, exploration, extraction, uh, processing, transportation use, etc., can disturb land. Uh, mining uh, can cause mining accidents, uh, health hazards, mine waste dumping, oil spills, and etc. So all of these are very, very um, harmful effects of uh, extraction of mineral resources on our environment. So let's see. Uh, what kind of minings uh, we have, so what we can find and what are their effects, environmental effects. So there is a surface mining, those are shallow deposits uh, which are removed from the surface and subsurface mining uh, which include deep deposits which are removed. So this one is very often in the region. It's an open pit mining where machines dig holes and remove all sand, gravel, and stones. And uh, this can create a toxic groundwater which can accumulate at the bottom. So we can see erosion as well. But uh, this toxic water uh, can entrance, this toxin can entrance food chain. Okay, so it, it can entrance um, eco in ecosystem and can reach the human uh, humans by different uh, levels in the food chain. Uh, this is area strip mining, uh, where earth uh, mover strips away over a burden and giant soils remove mineral deposits so often leaves highly erodible hills so this is a huge problem uh, and spoil banks called also spoil banks this is contour strip mining uh, so uh, used on hilly or mountainous terrain uh, unless the land is restored uh, also uh, uh, cause a huge uh, erosion and of course, all these toxins can reach, uh, for example, some lotic ecosystem, some river or stream, and again, will goes to uh, food chain and over the food chain to our stomachs and to our organism. So it's very important what is happening in the neighboring countries, in the neighboring regions, because these toxins and these hazardous uh, waste can very easily reach our ecosystem as well. So this is a, a mountain top removal where machinery remove the tops of mountain, for example, to expose some mineral resources and resulting the waste rock and dirt are dumped into the streams and valley below. And uh, there is uh, also mining impacts where metal ores are smelted or treated with the chemicals to extract desired metal, but these chemicals are potentially toxic. So uh, when we are talking about uh, 
mineral uh, extraction of mineral resources, potential one in the region, we have to consider all these um, negative effects. So the future supplies of resources depends on affordable supply and how rapidly that supply is used. So as we can see, there are three different curves of production uh, in time of, of some mineral resources. And the best option is if we perform recycling, if we reduce these minerals, reduce consumption, increase reserves by improved mining te technology, higher prices and new discoveries. So this is the best options because we will reach this deposition time um, let's say uh, in a three times uh, time then compared to this deposition time A, where only mine use and throw away a concept is considered. <clears throat> okay, so other burning issue that I would like to talk more about um, in a region and globally, it's air pollution. And air pollution, it's uh, always a problem in the developing countries. Uh, because, for example, developed countries already reached this level that uh, made it to, to lower these air pollutants. So some primary air pollutants may react with one another or with other chemicals in the air to form secondary air pollutants. So we are not just uh, we are not subjected just to primary pollutants. So be aware of the fact that secondary pollutants are sensitized. Uh, constantly in the atmosphere, and we are sub subjected to those as well. Those are uh, carbon oxides, so only a carbon monoxide is considered as a, top, as a pollutant. I mean, carbon dioxide is a normal component of the atmosphere. There is also nitrogen oxide, uh, which can be found uh, as a pollutant in the atmosphere and which can create nitric ice acid, uh, which can create further uh, acid deposition, acid rain, for example. There is also a sulfur dioxide, which creates a sulfuric acid in uh, the atmosphere, which is also a component of acid rain. There are suspended particulate matter, something which uh, causes uh, huge respiratory problems globally. Um, there are also uh, volatile organic compounds and uh, some radioactive gas, such as the radon. It, it can be found also in the atmosphere and it's considered as a pollutant. So, um, in most developed countries uh, where coal and uh, heavy oil is burned, industrial smog is not a problem due to uh, reasonably good pollution control or with the tall smoke stacks that transfer the pollutants to uh, other areas. So, something that we um, see outside uh, when the air pollution is reached the high level, it's photochemical smog. So it's a mixture of air pollutants formed by the reaction of nitrogen oxide and volatile organic carbo uh, sorry, hydrocarbons under the influence of sunlight. So that's a typical um, picture of cities in our region with a huge amount of photochemical smog uh, above it. So let's stop here and let's analyze this problem on a region level and, and in, I mean, in our countries. So uh, how this outdoor air pollution can be reduced? First of all, 
uh, by winds. And this is something uh, which is affected with, by, by climate changes in the region. So uh, also temperature inversion, it's something that is a normal phenomena. It's a regular phenomena which um, happen in valleys, so in lowlands surrounded by mountains where this um, layer of air is trapped, okay? So this layer is trapped here and keep this photochemical smog here. So this is something which normally happen in, for example, uh, niche uh, or in uh, Podgorica. So this is, a, this is something that is a normal. And I recommend you to, because we don't have enough time now, to read this article. It's a climate change in the Western Balkan and EU Green Deal. So what is the status mitigation and what are the challenges? So uh, you can find there um, very important facts about climate changes and how this will affect Western Balkan. And this uh, in yellow is something I stressed. It's a conclusion of this paper, which said that uh, leaving the Western Balkan outside the European Green Deal could lead to electricity price um, disparity with European uh, Union countries. So we have to follow green agenda for the Western Balkan. We are going to talk about it later in order to keep our prices of energy on the same level as our neighbors in order to be competitive. Uh, but uh, we, can, we can't, we have a problem with uh, climate changes and same climate changes which trigger a problem with air pollution. Because in comparison with the reference, previous reference period, the annual wind speed in the future will decrease in Serbia and this can be um, also, I mean, this is also relevant for all other countries around Serbia. I mean, uh, I was uh, uh, going on different internet, site, internet sites, web pages um, for uh, weather forecast to see what is going to happen with Koshova wind? So Koshova wind, it's a typical wind <coughs> which occurs and uh, continue to blow about 10 days uh, every autumn, fall, for example. And this year, I mean, previous year, I think it was in November, uh, there was just, uh, uh, Koshova was blow just 24 hours or even less. But this was enough to move all pollutants, air pollutants from my neighborhood. So uh, we should be aware of facts. So be aware of fact that there are climate changes that will accelerate this air pollution. So uh, high levels of air pollutants in their concentrations in the air are not just due to high production of it it's also due to climate changes. So please consider this fact when you're preparing some articles <clears throat> and before making some uh, critics. Okay, um, also acid deposition, it's a huge problem. So every deposition, uh, I mean, uh, snow, um, rain, dust, with pH lower than 5.6 is considered as an acid deposition. And there, here is in Europe and our region as well, with projected and measured, um, sorry, measured levels of acid deposition and uh, mean concentration of sulfur. And as you can see, um, we are not actually um, 
there is not so good, it's not so good situation in our region. Uh, and we have definitely problems with acid deposition. And as you can see, here is a global uh, image of uh, potential areas with a potential problem with acid deposition and soil pro uh, sensitivity. And here are we. So we are uh, in the area which can be potentially subjected to this kind of environmental problem. So acid pollution is one of several interacting stresses that can damage, weaken or kill trees and pollute surface and groundwater. So groundwater is also an important resource because it can't be restored easily. Sometimes there are thousands of years are needed for some groundwater aquifer to be um, restored and purified by natural processes. Uh, water pollution, it's definitely also a problem. One of the hotspots of uh, water uh, pollution is in my country, for example, and uh, water pollutants are a problem because they can be point source and non-point source. And here is an example of dilution and decay of degradable oxygen demanding, demanding waste and heat in streams. For example, different um, zones which are formed downstream for, from this point source. And this is a typical image of a, some point source uh, in our region. So most developed countries very sharply reduced point source pollution, but toxic chemicals and pollution from non-point sources are still problems. So this is something that we are going to uh, face with it very soon. So eutrophication is a natural process of enriching uh, uh, aquatic ecosystem with nutrients, but we have a huge problem in the region with the cultural eutrophication. So human activities accelerate the input of plant nutrients such as phosphorus and nitrogen and trigger um, eutrophication of lakes, ponds, and finally canals and rivers as well. Uh, so as, as I said, groundwater can be contaminated as well. And uh, we should think about this problem as well when we are com communicating and uh, preparing uh, some uh, campaigns, actions and articles. Um, pollution of groundwater. So it can take hundreds to thousands of years to contaminate the groundwater to cleanness itself and of degradable waste. So let's stop here for a while and talk a little bit about this slowly degradable waste, such as DDT. So DDT is a pesticide which was forbidden in 1972, 71 in the region. And if we really, sorry, <coughs> if we really forbidden use of this pesticide, we should uh, not find it in fresh amounts in our soil. But we still can find certain amounts of this pesticide in our environment, which means that some products uh, still contain this substance, which is uh, very hazardous and can uh, harm, be very harmful to human body and offspring. So what are the challenges uh, regional? Well, we should prevent groundwater contamination, reduce non-point runoff, reuse treated wastewater for irrigation. This um, irrigation uh, also, which is extensive in the region, especially in the lowlands, uh, will leave a huge amount of salt on, uh, can leave the amount, a huge amount of salt on the surface 
And this is also one of the problems called salinization. So salinization of agricultural land. Um, we should imitate nature as much as we can. We should reduce air pollution, reduce poverty, and also to keep our population under control. So what are wasting resources and how they can be classified? They can be classified as a solid waste, and hazardous. I, I mentioned this a few times, and we have a huge problems with um, these waste fields all in the region. And there is usually comments of foreigners who come here that uh, our region is, uh, th there is a huge amount of waste. So always communicate uh, as much as you can these, all these R's. So reuse, reduce, um, sorry, refuse, reduce, reuse, repurpose and recycle uh, of resources as an approaches. And we should also uh, think about hazardous waste, how safely to uh, uh, depose it and store it. So we should also consider some chemical hazardous, uh, hazardous chemical can harm humans or other animals and can be a flammable, explosive and irritant, interferes with oxygen uptake and can cause some induced allergic reaction, also can mimic hormones. So this is very important um, because we are subjected to a huge amount of plastic waste. So no one, I mean, uh, not so people will, a uh, huge number of people will consider a plastic as a dangerous uh, material, but this plastic will become a microplastic, which will enter food chain and reach our organisms. And uh, sometimes it's enough to take a plastic bag and to store plastic, food in the plastic materials um, frequently to get some um, endocrine um, problems because some materials uh, used where the plastic can mimic hormones such as estrogens. So they are called xenoestrogens and I think that we don't talk a lot enough about this problem in the region. We also have to be aware of the fact that if we want to express uh, impact of some substances on a human organism, we should be aware of this um, multiple uh, effects of air pollution, water pollutants, um, lifestyle, nutrition, health, all these together have to be taken into account in order to estimate human exposure to chemicals and their effects. And also we have to be aware of the fact that children are more sus susceptible to the effects of toxic substances because children breathe more air, drink more water, and eat more food per unit of body weight than adults. <clears throat> and usually most of the substances, new one, are innocent until proven guilty. Even in US, in United States, 99.5 uh, substances are not controlled, which are used commercially. Um, so, uh, th this, should, this, this information should be communicated as well. And let me see what is the time. Yeah, we have to finish um, uh, this first part of the session, but let's see first about invasive species. This is um, interesting. Uh, muscle which can create a huge damage on pipes, navigation,
canals and, uh, for example, boats. Uh, so their damage could be easily, uh, it's measurable, including, for example, this Hydrilla vertisolata plant in Florida. And this plant comes from Eurasia. Um, and there is a similar plant which can create problems in our region and comes exactly from the Florida. <clears throat> so we have to fight with invasive species, but let's see some basic facts. Uh, so uh, whatever we do, again, we have to be aware of the fact that climate changes will promote future invasions anyway. Okay, so as we can see in the future, um, Europe and our re region will be subjected to a huge number of invasions. If we analyze types of ecosystems that will be subjected to invasion in the future, in the next 100 years, we again see that the deciduous, temporary deciduous forest and mix temperate deciduous forest, something typical in our region, will be mostly subjected to uh, new invasions. And what groups of organisms will be most inviting uh, our region and any? Well, of course, those are aquatic invertebrates, aquatic plants, and terrestrial invertebrates. So, we, we can expect these species to um, invade our region. And uh, what are the corridors? Well, uh, physical corridors, of course, uh, floodplains and rivers and canals. For example, this is an um, embankment uh, around the Danube, uh, along the Danube, sorry. Uh, which is suitable habitat, for example, for this invasive species, um, Asclepia syriaca, which use these uh, banks to spread very quickly around the Europe. But also, I'll try after this course to go on the internet and search, for example, this species, well, the Snaria spiralis, which is in, considered invasive here, uh, but also some other species, for example, try to find um, Elodella, uh, Nutali, for example, or any other, and you will see how it's easily to order it and to get it here. So, internet is uh, the most frequent way of spreading of invasive species everywhere. And here is an example of ecological ignorance uh, from my neighborhood, where, for example, uh, one uh, governmental uh, organization, uh, I mean company, um, decided to cut aquatic plants um, in canal, but these aquatic plants, when they are cut into few pieces, these pieces become a reproductive uh, material. And from each piece, a new plant can grow. So imagine if you are cutting in wazy one, so you are promoting their spreading. So uh, this uh, action, I mean, this uh, uh, cutting of, of aquatic macrophytes uh, was actually in news. So th this was an article published uh, and they were proud of it, but they actually didn't consider some basic ecological facts. So we have to use ecology in environmental communication. So we have to have some basic knowledge. And in other parts of the world, there is a trend of eating and consuming um, <clears throat> invasive species. Sorry. <coughs> and I just wanted to show you that our region is also subjected to uh, illegal exploitation and over-exploitation of 
uh, resources such as gravel and sand. Maybe some of you can will recognize this uh, river. It's a Drina river. And as you can see, there was a lot of excavation fields here. But these habitats, I mean, these uh, lakes, which are formed in excavation fields, uh, can become very important alternative habitats for aquatic communities. So this is also one point of view that I would like uh, from you to think about that even there was uh, illegal excavation of gravel along the Drina floodplain or many rivers in the Balkans, they will left uh, behind a new habitat. Okay, so these new habitats can be refugees and can be nursery habitats for aquatic biodiversity in a whole catchment and other downstream habitats. So we should always think about uh, these newly formed habitats as an uh, alternative ones, because there is a fact that eutrophication, I mentioned previously, cultural eutrophication is destroying uh, natural lakes, ponds, and even canals and rivers uh, in the region. So these alternative newly formed are very important for maintaining biodiversity in the region. And finally, uh, before I show you some examples of very bad environmental communication and inappropriate use of all these terms that we discussed, I would like to say you a few words uh, about um, legislation, uh, environmental legislation. So, uh, first of all, always start from a green agenda for the Western Balkan region. So this agenda will guide you uh, to the main uh, legislation uh, documents that you should address in your article or in your campaign. But all of us should always find some laws and, or uh, any policy documents on uh, internet sites and web pages of ministries of environmental protection, for example, in our country. So those are uh, examples of internet sites that you have to reach and to find um, relevant information. So don't forget to take into account uh, environmental legislation when you're preparing some um, environmental article. Um, okay, so I will now, uh, sorry, go out from this presentation and let me show you a few examples of a very poor uh, environmental uh, glossary in these articles and how th these terms were used inappropriately. After that, we will have a short, I mean, we'll have 20 or, uh, minutes or half an hour discussion. You can uh, ask uh, questions. Uh, and after that, I will present you uh, main points about your assignment, this week assignment. So let's see first this article. It said, which is an eco-disaster, a landfill on the beautiful Drina. Okay, so I think most of you recognize this uh, dam. Um, and I mean, it's, it's a fact that this plastic waste is being accumulated there for a decade, so definitely it's a huge and burning environmental problem. Uh, but let's see how uh, how they communicated this. So let's see this paragraph. So the ecological catastrophe on the Drina River is a long-term problem we are facing. Hmm. So first of all, uh, 
if you try to Google ecological catastrophe, you won't find uh, so many um, uh, sites that will show you this. You will find environmental disaster. So Google will offer you environmental disaster as alternative term phrase, okay? Because if we really have an ecological disaster, it will mean that we have some invasive, invasive species that triggered some biotic interactions. That's the eco ecology. That would be an ecological problem. But we are here talking about environmental problem. So we would say environmental disaster. So this is a collocation frequently used. But still, it's not a single event because uh, environmental disaster would be a single event. And here, I mean, or ecological catastrophe. And we here have a process uh, which is happening for a while, I mean, for a decade. So please um, try to use all these terms properly. <clears throat> okay, let's see further. Yeah, this is a very common mistake. Ecological action, cleanup of Lim River coast. Well, uh, if we use ecology, I mean, in Serbian or Croatian, Montenegrin and Macedonian language, uh, it would be maybe a little bit more meaningful. But in English, it doesn't mean anything. Ecological action uh, would be something if we want, for example, to reintroduce some species. Then we will do ecological action. But cleaning of uh, shoreline or a bank, it's not ecological action. So please use environmental or environment as a word in such a um, title. So let's see further. So try to avoid the uh, word eco if you are not sure how to use it. Sorry. Um, and I hope it will open it. If not, we will go further. Yeah. Um, so let me show you the whole article. So it said Serbs protect uh, protest against lithium mining uh, and other eco problems. So uh, let me find. Yeah. Here is a sentence which is not relevant, I mean, it's true, but it's not relevant for this kind of um, text, for this article. So, uh, they, they are citing someone who said, we are thirsty this summer, uh, we breathe toxic air and land is being sold out. I mean, uh, we are thirsty due to uh, drought this year. Okay, so previous year. I mean, we are thirsty due to climate changes. And it's, it's some topic that should not be discussed uh, in this text. Okay, so we should keep uh, our focus on the topic. So as you can see during this lecture, there is a lot of things that we can discuss. Why should put such a um, sad sentence that is not relevant for this text. Okay, so that were examples. And now I will uh, stop sharing in order to see uh, chat and encourage you to ask questions. Okay, so let me see. Um, oh my God, how many questions. So, uh, in which group of causes of environmental problem you will put a grid? 
in and why. So, uh, can you explain what do you mean by this? Uh, I, I'm not sure that I understood uh, this this question. So please, if you can um, write more about it. So where do the pollutants go when blown by? Well, pollutants go in the neighboring region. They are um, still in the air. So this is the problem. But uh, we should be aware of the fact that our subject subjective feeling of pollution it depends on uh, speed of uh, wind. So can wind be seen as a solution? Hope if uh, pollution is just moved somewhere else. No, it's not solution. But before uh, you blame someone that uh, pollution rised, be aware of the fact that we are living uh, with uh, in period when, for example, Koshala blows just less than 24 hours a, a year instead of 10 days. Um, and, uh, um, dear Professor, can you comment more on the xenoestrogen chemicals? Does it uh, effect mean um, men and women health equally well. Xenoestrogens, I mean, as an estrogen, uh, can uh, um, have completely different effects in uh, men's and women's body due to different receptors, okay, because trigger different signaling uh, processes and depends on, of course, about, uh, uh, on combination of other, uh, for example, food that we take together with these xenoestrogens from our health and yes, definitely have a different effect. So what about growth in the uh, region? Large flood forest fires, are they not mentioned due to lack of time? Well, uh, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to talk about fires. Uh, because there is a Mediterranean region, um, I mean, belongs to Albania, Montenegro, Croatia. We have this uh, Mediterranean vegetation uh, type, uh, and fires are normal phenomena there. So this kind of vegetation is is even dependent from uh, from this from regular fires because seed of these plants can't grow uh, without a fire because they receive the signal from these um, different gases which, are, uh, which exist around seed during fire and start to grow. So um, floods, well, I forgot to say, yes, this thank you. Uh, Angela, uh, definitely we should say what are uh, climate changes uh, in temperate regions? Well, lack of winter precipitation, of snow cover is definitely one of uh, the worst climate changes phenomena in our region. And these changes can trigger um, floods. For example, this is something that we can expect this year uh, because due to uh, this Ukraine and Russian crisis, uh, many upstream countries uh, along the Danube accumulated water in their uh, reservoirs So, uh, along the Danube. So they can't um, store water when it starts, when the snow starts melting and probably uh, all the water will just go into our region. And for example, that was caused by uh, prolonged, uh, no, no, sorry, um, late period of uh, snow period, which started, for example, one week ago and will probably continue. And what about uh, just to see forest fire, large floods, and drought. Yeah, drought is a 
generally uh, a problem. And I forgot to say that, to mention one important fact that over 50% of rivers in the world are intermittent rivers, which means they uh, don't have a regular flow and continuous flow during the whole year. And uh, unfortunately, we have a drought, and many rivers are becoming intermittent in the Balkans. But also, we are creating intermittent rivers by building small hydropower plants and putting whole rivers into the uh, culvert. So, uh, but this is the topic of one of the following uh, following lectures. So, I won't talk about it a lot. So. Um, the worst of all, that is not the first time it happened every year and it's getting worse. Yes, I agree. So I think that the biggest problem in the communication is that the people writing these articles do not understand that ecology and environmental protection are not the same. It happens all the time. I agree completely and my mind just shut down when I see it the article that don't use these terms properly. Uh, but I always hope that the message from these articles will reach somehow the wider community. Um, thank you for these explanations of proper terminology. Thank you. Um, okay, just a lot of thank you. Uh, yes, we are going to talk about assignment. So what about the term eco-friendly packaging, which is very often used in products? Oh, yeah. Uh, one of my uh, good friends, um, who's not ecologist, asked me to explain different about eco-products, eco-friendly products, and uh, some other that, well, um, I, I actually didn't have a, a right answer for that, but uh, this should be something where, which, when become a waste, doesn't harmful uh, environment and it's degradable. You're mentioning problems of pollution of green limb and it is cross-border issue. Are countries doing anything bilaterally and how which laws are applicable in these cases. Well, uh, I had a PhD student who did a PhD thesis uh, on Drina River, and unfortunately, uh, for example, he tried to compare this legislation framework for gravel excavation, and he found no um, concordance between it. And definitely we need more bilateral and cross-border cooperation especially for protected areas, um, cross-border protected areas. So we share energy from APP Bidlshev Garbage. He has agreed. Um, they have regular trilateral meetings uh, and do nothing, as you can see on the photos and videos. Um, So my point is what uh, was uh, you could uh, sorry my point was you could use rational level when the discussion is discussion is rational when you have a deal with greedy investors and corrupt politicians it's irrational level okay I agree yes nothing on ground but maybe there are some updates on political level. Okay, there was some, there was some interesting discussion. So uh, I do not agree with some uh, consultations about forest cutting. I'm engineer of wood industry. What will we do with uh, weed forests, which are on Prushkagora, for example? 
Tilia forest and Fushkagora are weed forests because they uh, did not cut in right time. So forest is a um, live organism like any other forest. You have childhood, mature time and oldhood. If you cut forest in oldhood, you get just a firewood without technical wood. It is the same if we put a source cherry tree to give a cherries and wait for 15 days and collect root the cherries from the ground. Um, well, um, we should be careful anyway with uh, cutting of invasive species because we can uh, create some uh, environmental condi conditions that by this cutting, which haven't uh, existed previously, which can promote, for example, um, spreading of other invasive species. So, and that's a story about ecological ignorance. Um, so, so the only thing they are currently doing in Serbia, building a new large hydropower plant named Buck. Bukbiela on Drina River in Bosnia and Herzegovina, they have yet to reach an intellectual level to come up with something that is not a hydropower plant. So, uh, eco is a, such a great shadow for so many high and wrong intentions, unfortunately, and it's come from a less of knowledge in this area. I completely agree. Um, and how a garbage um, should be stored that is uh, environmentally acceptable because I think that all countries in the Balkans have a big problem with this matter. So I agree with you, but we didn't have enough time for this presentation, but I can upload it. I will, I will definitely upload it, this uh, presentation for this topic, uh, from the literature that I recommended to you. So whether uh, excessive noise is considered as an environmental issue, yes, definitely. And explanation of the terminology was really useful and important, and we should change our habits and share the knowledge. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. And let me uh, go share again screen. And go back to the presentation. And uh, to, to explain a little bit this uh, assignment. So please, uh, in groups, prepare an essay. It's preferably that groups are um, include people from different countries. And this essay should be up to 2,000 uh, words, but don't uh, waste too much time to fitting your essay into this form. I mean, uh, you can prepare an essay of 1,500 words, and it would be enough. But try to use all these terms from the lecture. Try to use term eco, ecological, um, try to use um, environmental as much as you can, uh, and try to write about some environmental, burning environmental problem uh, globally and in your local community. So I just want feedback from you to see if you're using this terminology properly, and if not, this is a good uh, um, opportunity to correct it. So I will write some um, narrative reports on your essays, so you will get feedback, um, and, and I hope so, it will be useful for you. And please, there are some um, sites uh, that I would like you can use it so you can find of all of them in syllabuses. So first one is lecture uh, dot ca. 
So, for example, uh, you can write a word. For example, I wrote habitat just to show you how it looks like before you uh, type the word. You see, uh, th this is a corpus of English language. And for example, I typed uh, habitat here because I would like to use this word in my essay, but I didn't know how to construct a sentence and how to use a right combination of other words which are called in English a collocations. So I would like to see in a particular corpus. So you can find a particular corpus of English language. So you even find can search word habitat in corpus of presidential speech speeches. You can uh, find here a social cor corpus of uh, social uh, spoken sampler, speech complete. Um, let me see what else uh, can be interesting in social articles, in a journal articles. So you can use these words uh, everywhere, search it, and I will search in academic general. So in academic general, I would probably won't get so much. So as you can see, <clears throat> there are a lot of examples how this word habitat is used in the text. And for example, I'm interested in this one, uh, anthropogenic changes in habitat resulting and I would like to see a broader context and so I just click on this word and I get all the text. So this will definitely help you in preparation of your articles, not just an essay. So this was one tool I wanted to show you and the other tool is um, all, uh, this one, ozidic.com. Uh, it's you can search, for example, disaster, world disaster, and it will give you adjectives used in collocations with a word containing a word, a word disaster. So uh, this helps you when, for example, you just block your mind and can't remember a right word which will go, for example, with disaster and just type it. So awful disaster, big, dreadful, great, major. Uh, what are the verbs used with disaster? Predict, avoid, prevent, invite, uh, uh, court, predict, and etc. So uh, this definitely can help you to prepare your essay and article to use a pro <clears throat> appropriate English uh, glossary and language. So I hope so this is useful. You can find these internet sites um, on uh, our Moodle platform and materials for the week two. So I will stop sharing again and <clears throat> Tell me, is, is there any other question? So if I understood correctly, every group member has to take a, both a local and global problem, and it is a big problem if you exceed the world. No, it's not a problem if you exceed, uh, and even if you uh, make uh, of 1,000 words um, essay, but I would like to see if you are using uh, this terminology properly. And please use these tools as well. Um, let me go up. Can we have a proper spelling uh, of web page? So uh, let me uh, send you here in the chat, but you can find it on the Moodle platform as well. All these internet sites. So
So um, I will show you. Just give me a second. Yeah. So I will copy paste these internet web pages here into chat. It doesn't, doesn't work. If it doesn't work, oh yeah, I, I managed it. Okay, so copy paste. Copy paste for yourself. Um, so, uh, local community. So, so, by local community, it refers to cities in which uh, we are living. Well, it can be a city. It can be a region. Oh, it can be, for example, Herzegovina or um, Vojvodina, whatever. So it depends on you. So what you consider as a local community. So uh, is there any other question? Oh yeah, one team, one assignment, one problem. Yes, that's okay. Definitely one essay per team, definitely. So you can consider one problem, you can consider more problems, it depends on you, but let be at least one. Uh, I want to see your language, I want to see your uh, environmental glossary, so if you're using it properly. So is there any other question? If not, I would like to thank you for your attention and for all these um, nice questions. So we will define a problem as a global issue and then locally, yes, definitely. Um, uh, so Sergen uh, said it said please if possible, but I didn't realize what. So what was the correct question? So are you required to cite from the case studies or any other source? Not. It's not required, but it's good if you can do it. Um, so to share power of of course I will share my PowerPoint. Point presentation, I always do that. It's not a problem. I, I will share the one I promised um, about uh, waste management. And it's also um, created according to a book I recommended to you. Uh, okay, thank you for very much for your beautiful presentation. Thank you very much for this beautiful comment and for your attention. So um, I would finish um, this webinar, if you agree. Then what do you say? Shall we finish it? I guess, yes. OK, so many thanks and, uh, to you again. And um, feel free to write any questions into a forum so we can discuss about these topics further. And you can expect uh, materials very soon after I leave this uh, webinar. So bye bye to all of you.